Well, it's starting to look like there is going to be a bona fide price war between the Xbox Series X and the PlayStation 5. And according to Bloomberg, it just got real interesting because Sony themselves are struggling with the PlayStation 5 price due to some costly parts. And ultimately, they may wait for the Xbox Series X pricing to be revealed by Microsoft before they say anything about the PlayStation 5's pricing. And you know we had to talk about this. What is going on everybody? Randall Thor 19 the man with the million back again with another video. Hope everyone's having a great start to the weekend. And if you could do me a big favor, if you enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. I would greatly appreciate it. I gotta say, Bloomberg dropped a bomb of an article last night, which of course I'll have linked below. The idea of Sony struggling with the PlayStation 5 price and the idea that they are waiting for Microsoft to make the first move is so interesting to me because as both Microsoft and Sony know, pricing is so important. Microsoft screwed that up this generation and they're paying for it. And obviously Sony knows that better than anybody when they priced the PlayStation 3 at $600 and almost killed the brand. Now for a long time on this channel, I have been beating the drums saying that I thought the PlayStation 5 would come in at $399 and be a very powerful system. But while saying that, I also thought Xbox Series X would be even more powerful, but you would have to pay more for it at $499. Well, according to Bloomberg, it's almost sounding like the PlayStation 5 is going to be $499 and Sony's looking at Microsoft being like, we need to see what they're going to price their system at first before we say anything about ours. So what's going on here? Well, Bloomberg says that scarce components have pushed the manufacturing costs for Sony's next PlayStation to around $450 per unit, forcing a difficult price setting decision in its battle with Microsoft, according to people with knowledge of the matter. Sony typically finalizes a console's price in February of the release year, followed by mass production in spring. With the PS5, the company is taking a wait and see approach said the people asking not to be named because the details are private. And with that $450 unit cost and a similar gross margin, the PlayStation 5's retail price would have to be at least $470. Now I gotta say, the idea that the bill of materials on the PlayStation 5 is around $450 does point to it actually being $499 when it launches this holiday. Because even though the bill of materials is everything in this system, how much it costs to actually build it, it doesn't include everything that Sony is spending money on for the PlayStation 5. It doesn't include the research and development costs. It doesn't include the shipping costs that they would have to pay to get those consoles from China to everywhere else in the world. It doesn't include the marketing costs. As you know, Sony's gonna have TV commercials and billboards and those cost a pretty penny. Of course, and it doesn't even include the retailer margins GameStop and Amazon would get for selling those consoles because they ain't doing it for free. So even though the BOM's 450, they gotta raise that up to 499, maybe even higher, although completely unlikely. There's no way they're going past 499 for them to even make any sort of money at launch, if at all. Now, of course, they could price it cheaper, go down to 399, but man, they would be risking a huge loss if they were going to do that. So where does Xbox and the Series X fit into all this? Well, the article says that some Sony game staff think it should sell the new console at a loss if necessary to match Microsoft's price, while other Sony executives would prefer to make money as the company did with the PlayStation 4. That people within the PlayStation business unit said a key factor in deciding the ultimate PlayStation 5 retail price will be where Microsoft sets its price for the next generation Xbox Series X. Microsoft is widely expected to hold that information back until the E3 Gaming Expo in Los Angeles in June. So here's what I think is really going on here. 
I think Sony has built themselves a pretty powerful PlayStation 5 and they wanted to make money right away at $499. The problem is I think Sony now realizes and knows that the Xbox Series X is more powerful, but they were expecting it to be more expensive. Now they're worried that Microsoft might take a loss and sell the Series X at $499, and then Sony themselves would be between a rock and a hard place. Either price it the same as Series X at $499, but be weaker, or price it at $399 and take a huge loss, which would affect their revenue for the coming years, because now you have to make up those losses somewhere else. But if you weren't planning for it, that's going to be a problem. Look, best case scenario for Sony here is that Xbox takes the stage at E3, says the Series X is really powerful, super premium, and because of that, they are basically forced to sell the system at $599, letting Sony sell the PlayStation 5 at a much more friendly $499 price tag making money right away from day one. And there's some other examples here in the article that kind of point to that price. It says here that Sony executives are voicing patience about the next console's pricing as they anticipate the transition to be a gradual one. But you know what I could have sworn Jim Ryan said last year? He said that he wanted to transition PlayStation 4 users to the PlayStation 5 in a pace never seen before. In fact, this is what he had to say. As we move towards the next generation in 2020, one of our tasks, probably our main task, is to take that community and transition it from the PS4 to the PS5 and at a scale and pace that we've never delivered on before. Now, is it just me or do those two quotes seem pretty dissimilar? In one, you have Jim Ryan saying that they need to transition people at a, at a scale and pace never seen before. But then here, it's that Sony executives are saying, hey, uh, we, they anticipate the transition to be a gradual one. Something's not jiving there. Now, at 399, I could see you transitioning users really quickly, but if Sony's decided on 499, yeah, it's not gonna be faster than we've ever done it before. It's definitely going to be a gradual one. Now, the other really good quote here is basically that Sony's CEO, Yoshida, has said that the business should be judged by the number of active users, not the number of hardware units sold. And I swear I had to do a quick double take and I, and I thought to myself, wait a minute, that doesn't say Phil Spencer because that's exactly what Phil has been saying for like the past year, two years now. And every single time he says it, the PlayStation fans get their panties in a bunch and start throwing fits on Twitter. Yet here we go, the Sony CEO basically saying the same thing. And yes, I know Sony has more active users and more consoles sold than Xbox. They are the market leader. They have 103 million active users and Xbox is somewhere at 65. But it's interesting to see the Sony CEO say that hardware sales aren't the metric anymore. It's number of active users. I just thought that was really interesting. So best case scenario for PlayStation is that Xbox Series X is at $600 and they can comfortably sell the PlayStation 5 at 500. Best case scenario for Xbox is that they come in with Xbox Series X at $499. Sony blinks and doesn't want to drop the price of the PlayStation 5 to $399. They say, you know what, we'll go head to head with Xbox at $499, of course. PlayStation 5 still probably going to outsell the Xbox Series X at that price point. I've said it all along. I expect Sony to sell more consoles because PlayStation is a bigger worldwide brand. However, there's also Xbox Lockhart to think about. If the PlayStation 5 truly is going to be 500 and so is the Series X, if Microsoft can sell that Xbox Lockhart, the cheaper SKU, at $299, that can potentially do some damage in the long run. But man, this is really shaping up to be something special. These next gen consoles, what the price is gonna be, who's gonna be more powerful, but most importantly, what games are gonna be able to be played on that machines. I just can't wait for this holiday to come and I can 
trade in my PS4 Pro and my Xbox One X because I am pretty much done with this generation. All right, guys, that is the video. Let me know what you think the price of both consoles are going to be in the comments below. And if you really enjoyed this video, make sure you hit that like and subscribe button. Share this out on social media or tell a friend about the channel. I would appreciate that. And if you always want to be notified immediately when I drop a new video, make sure you hit that notification bell. Thank you guys so much for watching. I greatly appreciate it. And I'll see everybody in the next video. Later, guys.